Hello, I'm Jessie and welcome to Tech World, your quick roundup of some of the top technology news stories from across the globe. In this month's episode, we bring you the latest on Facebook, Uber and Elon Musk. For this month's Hot Topics interview, we spoke to Ryan Rubin from EY about cybersecurity and crypto frauds. First though, here are your top international stories. Facebook has been handed a £500,000 fine, the maximum amount possible, as a result of its part played in the Cambridge Analytica data scandal. According to the Information Commissioner, the fine relates to two breaches of the Data Protection Act. The Information Commissioner's office said Facebook failed to protect its users' information and was not transparent about how the data was harvested by third parties. However, the fine is unlikely to dent Facebook's finances. To put this into context, the tech giant made £500,000 in revenue every five and a half minutes during the first quarter of this year. A senior executive from ride-hailing firm Uber has resigned after an investigation into how she handled allegations of racial discrimination at the company. Leanne Hornsey was head of Uber's Human Resources Department with the title of Chief People Officer. Hornsey had been in the role for 18 months and her resignation comes just a year after Travis Kalanick, Uber's founder, left following reports of gender discrimination and harassment. Tech billionaire Elon Musk's attempt to aid the Thai cave rescue mission has attracted both criticism and praise. The SpaceX and Tesla founder said on social media that he had visited the Operations Command Center where he said he had left a mini-submarine that had been designed to carry the trapped football team to safety. The head of the rescue mission thanked Mr. Musk for his offer, but said the submarine could not be used. While his intervention has been praised by some, others have questioned his motivations and have suggested he might have even been a distraction. Luckily though, all tough boys on the coach were safely rescued. That's it for our top global tech news roundup, but keep watching to see this episode's Hot Topics interview. For this month's Hot Topics interview, we spoke to Ryan Rubin from EY about cybersecurity and crypto frauds. Hello, thank you very much for joining us today. So tell us about your job um, and what it entails. Thank you very much. Uh, so I, I, I'm a partner within our assurance practice uh, and uh, help organizations specifically uh, within the TNT sector um, deal with cyber risks. Okay. Uh, often that, that does entail um, doing, carrying out investigations when things go wrong, uh, but also advising organizations about what they should do to stay out of trouble. So when it comes to cybersecurity, what do technology startups need to bear in mind? So uh, I think one of the key things for startups is cybersecurity may not be a primary focus for them uh, as they're building up their business, uh, trying to get new clients, establishing a product line, etc. Um, cybersecurity might actually land up being in the background. Um, however, what, one of the key challenges that um, organizations will have specifically if they're in the technology sector um, is that a, a cyber uh, breach or disruption could actually significantly impact the, the, their business and therefore it's, it's actually something that should be at the forefront of people's minds. Um, unfortunately many won't necessarily have a dedicated person responsible for cyber security uh, and, and therefore startups will need to think about um, how they can gain the right skills and support uh, from, from other areas in order to be successful. So what about companies operating in the crypto space? What do they need to know about? Um, so I think one of the key things uh, is that leaders need to really understand the type of uh, impacts that the breach, the breach is having. Um, there are a number of stakeholders that uh, would need to be contacted, potentially um, customers, potentially the regulator, um, and getting a good idea and a good handle of um, what the impacts of the breach is having on the business itself um, and who are the right people to, to phone um, and, and, and make contact with is, is really key. Um, so some of the stakeholders may include, um, for example, external legal counsel, um, some kind of links with law enforcement, uh, links into the insurance uh, community if, if the startups have got some type of cyber insurance. Um, but what's really important is not actually waiting for the breach to happen. Uh, what I think is key is that startups think about um, preparing for a breach uh, before it takes place um, and making sure that they have enough uh, of their preparation in play. Um, that could include communications with um, customers. Uh, it may include liaisons with uh, law enforcement, uh, having appropriate links into um, the legal community uh, and, and professional services organizations just in case um, there is a need to bring people to bear very quickly. 
And if we look specifically at the crypto space, what do people need to bear in mind in terms of cybersecurity? Yeah, so I think there's a little bit of a misconception that um, people using cryptocurrencies and blockchain, it's already secure, so mm -hmm. people don't have to worry about it. Um, but, but uh, you know, fortunately, um, there, there are still a number of significant attacks um, and frauds that are taking place. Um, and, and what we see actually is a lot of the entrepreneurs in the crypto space are incredibly talented um, within crypto, mm -hmm. but don't necessarily get some of the basics right um, when it comes to protecting their own um, computers, their own identities. Uh, and, and so, you know, for me, one of the key recommendations is stepping back from the business, mm -hmm. uh, thinking about potentially you as a CEO or the owner of a st uh, running a startup might be a target um, and putting in place enough hurdles that will stop um, fraudsters taking advantage of, of and, and, and compromising you. So some of the, the key controls um, that, that I'd be recommending uh, would be things like using two-factor authentication uh, when it comes to accessing email and computer systems, um, making sure there's a separation between the computers that are being used to access crypto keys um, and uh, wallets um, and the day-to-day -day computer that, that you're using uh, for your day job. There's no necessary, no reason to have, uh, to use the same equipment for both, um, for both things. Um, increased monitoring uh, is also really important um, to, to ensure that, you know, one is able to detect and, and uh, pick up any unusual activity that might be happening with, with, within uh, your, your business. Um, and, and, and being vigilant, uh, because again, there, there are people out there trying to um, steal those cryptocurrencies, uh, take advantage of um, the, the newfound wealth that some of the, um, those that, that have ICO'd um, have, have made. And unfortunately, you know, time and time again, we've seen quite a lot of really sad stories of um, people working very hard to raise funds um, and then find that you know, within a very short period of time, those funds disappear um, down a, a black hole um, of, of cybercrime. Can you discuss any specific case studies of things that have gone right and things that have gone wrong? Sure, so um, I'll start with a couple of things that, that I've seen going wrong because uh, a lot of our, our business is actually helping clients respond to uh, attacks and, and um, we do see a lot of phishing uh, attacks still taking place. Um, we see a lot of IP theft um, taking place where uh, staff or uh, individuals um, might come into the organization and, and take hold of some of the IP that um, specifically startups have spent a lot of time working on. Um, a lot of startups actually um, are in shared premises and um, you know, unfortunately um, th th that has big implications when it comes to physical security because if there is a theft, if there's some kind of cyber attack that's taking place uh, in the business, mm -hmm. it might actually be hard to attribute that to one individual because you know you, the startups are working within a, a shared space. In terms of things going right? So th those organizations that you know think about security up front, um, that produce uh, products that have security built in by design, um, often do come out really well. Um, so um, you know th there's a lot of uh, organizations that have gone to market with e-commerce solutions, mm -hmm. um, with, with cryptocurrency platforms, that, that have built-in security from the ground up. Um, and, and these are the organizations that don't necessarily have uh, major breaches, um, that, that don't necessarily, you know, they kind of keep out, out of the papers. Um, but they, they're building security in as part of the um, compelling value of the company um, and, and ensuring that that's on the forefront of, of everything that they're doing. So what are the key trends that you're um, seeing in this space? One of the interesting things is we've seen a major shift from uh, the attackers going after computer systems mm -hmm. um, to the attackers going after people. Um, and, and that continues to be a very fruitful avenue for, um, for cyber criminals to, to go after. Uh, so, you know, whilst there's, there's com increased complexity on the technology side and, and there's some really, um, you know, interesting and innovative solutions coming out, um, you know, we, we need to really get the, the human side of security um, sorted out as well. Uh, in, in, in order to reduce um, security attacks from, from taking place. And finally, where do you see the industry heading towards in the next five years or so? So we're at a really exciting time in the industry because um, firstly, we now have the ability to store and monitor um, logs and security events in a way that we could never do before. Mm -hmm. um, so the combination of, of analytics, um, security analytics, as well as artificial intelligence is both gonna help us as defenders 
um, but also it will help the attackers because they're, they're using these techniques as well. Um, I think when it comes to things like the blockchain, there's some you know, really great use cases um, for securing um, and um, creating immutable records. Um, but you know, the blockchains on the sides of the blockchains, the perimeter or the periphery of the blockchain, um, they can also be attacked. Um, and so I think that what one shouldn't get into the false uh, sense of security that by using some of these new technologies, um, you know, you're going to be immune from, from, uh, from attacks. Uh, so yeah, there's, a, there's some very interesting innovation taking place in the um, access control space. Um, one of the key challenges that we continue to face is how do we identify people, um, customers and users on the internet, so remotely. So there's some very interesting uh, anti-money laundering uh, approaches to, to, to that that, again, the cryptocurrency exchanges um, are, are, are looking into. Um, uh, strong authentication. So in the past, it used to be very expensive mm. um, to implement a two-factor authentication. So one factor is your password and the second factor is some number that changes and is maybe sent to a mobile phone or an independent device. Mm. Um, that technology is now you know, much more widely available. Uh, and I think will become the, the norm and the standard when it comes to any kind of uh, user authentication. Um, and then, you know, as I mentioned, um, the, there's also there is a shift from um, trying to prevent attacks from happening to actually responding and dealing with attacks that do happen in a better way. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, the, the whole area of security monitoring, uh, data analytics and, and so on, is really going to um, put us at a much greater advantage against the attackers um, if organizations take hold of these um, technologies and approaches uh, and, and start to actively monitor behaviors, um, detect usual activity and unusual activity, and then respond quickly uh, when, when th there is anything unusual taking place. Um, so, so I think that's where a lot of the, the market and the focus is going to shift um, into this more defensive strategy um, rather than a, a pure um, a strategy of, of, of trying to protect everything, um, assuming that nothing will, will ever get in. Um, I, I think an, a, another really important thing is there's, we, there's some great kind of point solutions coming out in the different spaces that I've, I've covered today. Mm -hmm. um, but but what, what's really key is that organizations need to have multiple layers of security. Um, the people, the human layer that I've mentioned, um, but also you know, the authentication layer, the uh, monitoring layer, the, uh, the cultural and awareness layer, um, and, and, and each of these is, it will be really key um, to have a, a holistic um, approach to dealing with cybersecurity in the future. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. That's all for this episode. To get more top tech news straight to your inbox, visit www.uktech.news.